Hello everyone. Good evening. So here we shall solve some of J mains previous year questions on the chapter uh, inverse trigonometric functions. So any doubts if you have, please write that in the comments. Uh, we shall obviously clarify them and in any other chapter of uh, maths if you have more difficulty then please mention the name of that chapter also in the comments so that we can give more priority on it and solve more and more questions on that chapter also some important more questions will be uploaded in the sapiens education application so please install our application whose link has been provided in the description So here it has been told that um, given that the inverse trigonometric function assumes principal values only, let x, y be any two real numbers in the interval minus 1 to plus 1 such that cos inverse x plus minus sine inverse x that is equal to alpha and alpha is more than or equal to minus pi by 2 and less than or equal to pi then the minimum value of x square plus y square plus 2xy sine alpha is to find the minimum value of this. So sine inverse y. So therefore, uh, sine inverse y, sine inverse y, we can write it as cos inverse of root over 1 minus. Mm, 1 minus x square 1 minus y square so therefore cos inverse x minus cos inverse of over 1 minus y square that is equal to alpha now from here we can say um, cos inverse x minus cos inverse y we can say this is equal to cos inverse of uh, Supers of x root over cos a cos b plus sine of b. So this is, or we can also write cos inverse x that is equal to sine inverse of root over 1 minus x square. So then we can write it as sine inverse of root over 1 minus x square minus sine inverse y that is equal to alpha so therefore sine a cos b this will be sine inverse of sine a cos b which is 1 minus x square root over 1 minus x square into 1 root over 1 minus y square uh, minus cos a sine b so cos a is x cos a sine b that is x y This is equal to alpha. So therefore, root over 1 minus x square over 1 minus y square minus xy that is equal to sine alpha. So then we can uh, write root over 1 minus x square minus y square that is equal to xy plus sine alpha. Now we can square both sides. Then we can say that this will be. Therefore, this will be uh, 1 minus x square into 1 minus y square equals to x y x square y square plus sine square alpha plus 2 x y sine alpha. <laughs> this will be 1 minus x square minus y square plus x square y square that is equal to x square y square plus sine square alpha plus 2xy sin alpha x square y square that will cancel out then we can say x square plus y square plus 2xy sin alpha that will be equal to 1 minus sin square alpha so which is equal to cos square alpha <coughs>
so now we have to find the minimum value of cos square alpha now alpha is in the range minus pi by 2 to pi minus pi by 2 to pi now cos square alpha i can write it as 1 plus cos alpha by 2 so now cos 2 alpha so 2 alpha that will go from minus pi to pi simply i can say cos square alpha that is its graph will be somewhat like this square alpha. now cos square its minimum value has been asked so now cos square pi by 2 that will be zero so therefore zero is the minimum value of this option a is the correct answer then here it has been told that uh, if the mean of the function sine inverse of 3x minus 22 divided by 2x minus 19 plus plus this will be log base e 3x square minus 8x plus 5 divided by x square minus 3x minus 10 it's the domain of this function of f of x that is uh, domain of domain of the function f that is given as alpha to beta then 3 alpha plus 10 beta value that we have to find out that we have to find out so now um 3x minus 22 by 2x minus 19 that should be from minus 1 to plus 1 since why sine inverse is defined only when this value is from minus 1 to plus 1 so now therefore 3x minus 22 by 2x minus 19 plus 1 that should be greater than or equal to 0 so 3x minus 22 plus 2x minus 19 by 2x minus 19 that should be greater than or equal to 0 so it means that 5x minus um, 19 plus 2 that is 21 21 that is 41 41 by 2x minus 19 that is greater than or equal to 0 so therefore um, here if we take the So here this x can be 19 by 2, which is 8 point, uh, this is 9.5, which is, and x can be 41 by 5, that is 8.2. So these are the two critical points. So this is 41 and 2, this is 9.5. So if x is more than 9.5, that will be positive, negative, and positive. So this will be. So x will belong to minus infinity to 19 by 2 union 1 by 5, which is included 41 by 5 to infinity. And also. And also 3x minus 22 by 2x minus 19 minus 1. That should be less than or equal to 0. So therefore 3x minus 22 minus 2x plus 19 divided by 2x minus 19. That is less than or equal to 0. So therefore x minus 3 divided by 2x minus 19. That is less than or equal to 0. So therefore x 
can be therefore this is the uh, here we have this is 3 and this is 9.5 so if x is more than 9.5 this is positive negative and positive so therefore we have to take the we have to take the intersection of all of them now in this logarithmic part this also should be greater than 0 therefore now 3x square minus 8x plus 5 divided by x square minus 3x minus 10 that should be greater than or equal to that should be obviously greater than 0 so this one you can say 3 5 is a 15 3x square minus 3x plus uh, minus 5x plus 5 divided by 2 root 5 is a 10 so x square minus 5x plus 2x minus 10 that is greater than 0 so this will be 3x into x minus 1 minus 5 into x minus 1 divided by x into x minus 5 plus 2 into x minus 5 that is greater than 0 so it means 3x minus 5 into x minus 1 divided by x minus 5 into x plus 2 that is greater than 0 so we have to take only those points where x this value will come greater than 0 so the critical points are minus 2 then 1 then 5 by 3 then 5 so if i take some value more than 5 this will be positive so positive negative positive negative and positive positive negative positive negative positive so therefore we have to take the values in the range we have to take x belongs to minus infinity to minus 2 union 1 to 5 by 3 union 5 to infinity So therefore the if we want to find the domain of the function f then we have to take the intersection of all these is this is uh, minus 2 f1 5 by 3 and 5 this is 3 is somewhere here 3 is somewhere here and 9.5 is somewhere here and then 8.9.5 8.2 is somewhere here 8.2 okay so more than 9.5 and less than 8.2 this is actually wrong this should be minus infinity to 8.2 it means 41 by 5 and then 19 by 2 infinity then less than uh, then 3 to 9.5 3 to 9.5 x belongs to here uh, x belongs to 3 to 19 by 2 it's included then here uh, minus infinity to minus 2 then 1 to 5 by 3 and then 5 to infinity so the common part is coming this therefore the domain of the function f that is obviously 5 to 8.2 5 to 8.2 which is forty-one point five. Forty-one by five. 41.5 is included but 19 by 2 is excluded this would be that is wrong actually this should be a minus infinity to 41 by 5 which is included and union 19 by 2 which is excluded
So five to forty one by five. And for alpha value is five and beta value is forty one by five. And for uh, three alpha plus ten beta, we have to find so three into five plus ten into forty one by five. So five to z ten, so fifteen plus eighty two. So that is ninety seven. Option C is the correct answer. Then here we have to find a, a which is sine inverse of sine 5 and b that is cos inverse of cos 5 and a square plus b square value is how much. So now uh, 5 so 5 is more than pi but less than 2 pi. Now therefore uh, pi minus 5 I can do and 2 pi uh, and 5 minus 2 pi I can do. So now sine inverse is in the range minus 1.57 to 1.57 which is pi minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 for sine inverse it is the principal value and for cos inverse the principal value branch is 0 to 3.14. Now uh, Pi minus 5 that is uh, 3.14 minus 5 which is coming 5 3.14 which is uh, 6 and then 8 1.86 which is coming minus 1.86 and this value is minus this is 6.28 minus, minus 5 that is minus 1.28. So this is coming within the principal value branch of sine inverse. So sine in A will be equal to 5 minus 2 pi and cos this will be also this will be of uh, this will be 2 pi minus 5. Since we can write it cos inverse cos of minus 5. Then 2 pi minus 5 will come within the principal value branch. So therefore, a square plus b square that will a is this. So 5 minus 2 pi whole square plus 2 pi minus 5 whole square. So this is actually 2 into 5 minus 2 pi whole square. So this is 2 into 25 plus 4 pi square minus 2 to 4, 4 pi is a 20, 20 pi. So this will be 50 plus 8 pi square minus 40 pi. 8 pi square minus 45, 40 pi plus 50. So option C is the correct answer. Then here it is told that uh, for alpha plus beta plus uh, for alpha, beta and gamma which are not equal to 0, sine inverse alpha plus uh, sine inverse beta plus sine inverse gamma that is equal to pi and alpha plus beta plus gamma alpha plus beta minus gamma that is equal to 3 alpha beta then gamma is equal to how much to find that so now this i can write alpha plus beta whole square minus gamma square that is equal to 3 alpha beta this I can write alpha square plus beta square plus 2 alpha beta minus gamma square that is equal to 3 alpha beta. So therefore alpha square plus beta square minus gamma square that is equal to alpha beta. So therefore I can write alpha square plus beta square minus gamma square by 2 alpha beta that is equal to 1 by 2. If we divide both sides by 2 alpha beta, dividing both sides by alpha beta by 2 alpha beta on both sides. 
Therefore, if we have a right, suppose if we have a scaling triangle or any type of triangle, suppose if I take uh, this is angle alpha, this is beta, this is gamma. Mm, then we can say that uh, suppose this side length is A, this side length is B, this side length is C. So I can say A by sine alpha that is equal to B by sine beta that is equal to C by sine gamma that is equal to R. But R is the circum radius of this triangle. So then therefore I can say that A uh, sine alpha that is equal to A by 2R sine beta that is equal to B by 2R and sine gamma that is equal to C by 2R. And, and also, so this will be called the sine rule. This is called the sine rule. Sine rule. Now, the cosine rule says that cos gamma, cos gamma that will be uh, that is. A square plus B square minus C square by 2 AB. Now A square A I can write it as 2R sine alpha whole square plus B I can write it as 2R sine beta whole square minus C I can write it as 2R sine gamma whole square divided by 2 AB so 2 into 2R sine alpha into R sine beta. So this I can write it as 4 r square sine square alpha plus 4 r square sine square beta minus 4 r square sine square gamma divided by 8 8 r square sine sine alpha sine beta so from here 4 r square i can take as common and i can cancel so therefore cos gamma that i can write it as sine square alpha plus sine square beta minus sine square gamma by 2 sin alpha sin beta. So I can write it. And this will happen only if the sum is 180 degrees. Sum, here it is told sin inverse alpha. Here actually, Okay. So here actually the side lens, I should tell it as alpha, beta, gamma. The angle we can take it as ABC. Angles we can tell it as ABC. So here I am saying, let's say sine inverse alpha, we take it as angle A. Sine inverse beta, we take it as angle B. And sine inverse gamma, we take it as angle C. So then it means it is saying that a plus b plus c is pi means 180 degrees. So it means that the sum of the three angles is 180. So it is forming a triangle. So if I take this is alpha, this side length is alpha, this side length is beta, this side length is gamma. So therefore I can say that uh, alpha by sine a that is equal to beta by sin b that is equal to gamma by sin c that is equal to r. r is the circum radius of this triangle. So then I can say sin a that is equal to alpha by, no, okay, alpha by 2 r. And suppose if I tell if the uh, circum radius r is equal to half, then we can say that a will be equal to sin inverse sine inverse alpha and similarly and similarly b i can tell it as sine inverse gamma no sine inverse 
beta sin uh, since 2r sin b that is uh, beta 2r sin b that is equal to beta so if r is half then sin b will be beta so p will be equal to sin inverse beta similarly c will be equal to sin inverse gamma and these will happen only if i tell the circum radius value is half units so then we can say that uh, now cos c cos c that is equal to obviously that will be a square uh, plus b square minus c square by 2 ab so i can say it is actually alpha square plus beta square minus gamma square by 2 alpha beta c now alpha is actually alpha that is sin a alpha is obviously sin a then so this will be sin square a plus sin square b minus sin square c divided by 2 sin a sin b and this value we have got it as half so cos c is half cos c is half now sin c that is equal to gamma so therefore now cos c that will be equal to root over 1 minus gamma square so therefore cos c that is we got it as half so therefore root over 1 minus gamma square that is equal to cos c we got it as half so one root over 1 minus gamma square is half so 1 minus gamma square that is 1 by 4 gamma square is equal to 1 3 by 4 so therefore gamma is equal to 3 by 2 gamma is equal to root 3 by 2 so option b is the correct answer So here it is told that x equal to m by n m and n are co prime natural numbers be a solution of the equation so a cos of 2 sin inverse x that is equal to 1 by 9 now here the uh, x equal to m by n is the solution where m and n are co prime so m by n is the uh, is the fraction in the simplest form simplest fraction form so then uh, let alpha comma beta where alpha greater than beta be the roots of the equation mx square minus nx minus m plus n that is equal to zero so here alpha and beta are the roots of the equation then alpha comma beta lies on the line So then, now, uh, let us take sine inverse x as theta. So then, uh, x will be equal to sine theta. And therefore it is told cos of 2 theta cos of 2 theta that is equal to 1 by 9 so cos 2 theta it means 1 minus 2 sine square theta that is 1 by 9 so therefore 2 sine square theta that is equal to 8 by 9 so therefore sine square theta that is 4 by 9 sine square theta that is 4 by 9 so sine theta is x so x square is 4 by 9 so therefore x is equal to 2 by 3 so which is m by n so therefore m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3 since why m and n it is told it is they are co prime natural numbers co prime natural numbers only so m is 2 n is 3 and then um, so therefore the equation is 2 x square minus 3 x minus 2 plus 3 that is equal to 0 so it means 2x square minus 3x plus 1 that is equal to 0 so therefore uh, therefore now um, so its roots are alpha and beta so now 2x square 
minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0. We have to find its roots. So therefore, I can if we factorize it, then we'll get 2x square minus 2x minus x plus 1 equal to 0. So 2x into x minus 1 minus into 2x minus 1. That is equal to 0. So 2x minus 1 into x minus 1 equal to 0. So therefore, x can be equal to 1 or half. And alpha and beta are the roots, and alpha is more than beta, it is told. So therefore, alpha is 1 and beta is half. So therefore, 1 comma half will satisfy which line that we have to find out. So 1 comma half will satisfy option, uh, 5x plus 8y equal to 9. Since y, 5 into 1 plus 8 into half, that will be equal to 5 plus 4, that is 9. So option C is the correct answer. Then here it is told, consider only the principal values of inverse trigonometric functions, the number of positive real values of x satisfying tan inverse of x plus tan inverse of 2x uh, equals to pi by 4 is consider only inverse trigonometric functions. So the only principal values you have to take. So tan inverse, its principal value branch is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. And the number of real values of x satisfying this that you have to find out. So now tan inverse of 2x that is equal to pi by 4 minus tan inverse x. Tan inverse x. So now if you take tan on both sides, then we'll get 2x equal to tan of pi by 4 minus tan inverse x. So now suppose if I take tan inverse x is theta, then it means x will be equal to tan theta. So this I can write 2x equal to now 10, 10 pi by 4 minus theta we know 10 pi by 4 minus theta that is equal to 1 minus 10 theta by 1 plus 10 theta. So therefore here this will be equal to 1 minus x by 1 plus x. So now if we uh, simplify it then we will get 2x minus plus 2x square that is equal to 1 minus x. So therefore 2x square plus 3x minus 1 that is equal to 0. Therefore, now, uh, so x will be equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square b square minus 4ac so 8 by 2a so 2 3 2 to the 4 so therefore x will be equal to minus 3 plus or minus root 17 by 4 now it is told that uh, only positive real values of x you have to take so it means this negative answer we should not take so therefore x will be equal to only root 17 minus 3 by 4 since by root 17 we know that is that is slightly more than 4 so this will be greater than 0 so only one positive real values of x will satisfy the given equation so option d is the correct answer So here it is told here it is told that let S be the set of all solutions of the equation. Uh, inverse two x minus two cos inverse of root over one minus x square that is equal to pi. 
x belongs to minus half to plus half. Then uh, summation of all x belongs to s. 2 sin inverse x square minus 1 is how much that you find out. So now uh, cos inverse of root over 1 minus x square that can be written as this is. So suppose if I take x as sin theta. This sine theta, then one minus x square will be minus sine square theta. That is cos square theta. So it means this I can write two cos inverse of cos theta. That is two theta. So theta will be sine inverse of x. So this is uh, two sine inverse of x plus cos inverse of two x. No, minus two sine inverse x plus cos inverse of two x. That is equal to pi. It means that cos inverse of 2x that is equal to pi pi plus 2 sin inverse x. Now, if we apply cos on both sides, then we we'll get 2x that is equal to cos of pi plus theta. Since y theta is sin inverse x. Now, pi plus cos pi plus 2 theta that is uh, so it is in the in the third quadrant so it is minus cos 2 theta so this is 2x equal to cos minus cos 2 theta therefore now sin theta is x therefore cos 2 theta that, that will be uh, cos 2 theta that will be 1 minus 2 sine square theta. So that is 1 minus 2 sine square theta, that is 1 minus 2x square. So this I can write 2x equal to 2x square minus 1. So from here we get 2x square minus 2x minus 1 equal to 0. So therefore x will be how much? x will be minus b plus or minus square root of b square e square minus 4ac plus 4 to the 8 by 2a, 2 to the 4. So therefore, x will be equal to 2 plus or minus 4 plus 8, that is 12. So 2 root 3 by 4. So therefore, x will be equal to 1 plus or minus 3 by 2. Now, um, x is going from it is told x is going from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 now this value is pi This is one plus or minus. So this is approximately one plus or minus one point seven three two by two. So this will be uh, two point seven three two by two. X will be two point seven three two by two or minus zero point seven three two by two. So this will be X will be equal to either one point uh, two three the six six one point three six six and this will be minus 0 0.23 so this these two values are coming within this range of x is coming within this range of x no this one is not coming within this range. Only this one is coming within the given range. So therefore, only x will be equal to 1 minus 1 point uh, 1 minus root 3 by 2. X is only 1 minus root 3 by 2. So now, 
therefore uh, only this is the required value of x so summation 2 sin inverse x square minus 1 summation 2 sin inverse x square minus 1 x belongs to s so actually therefore the set s is nothing but 1 minus root c by 2 only it is a single turn set only, only one single element is there This will be to 2 sine inverse of 1 minus root 3 by 2 square minus 1. So this will be equal to 2 sine inverse of 1 plus 3 minus 2 3 a square plus b square minus 2ab by 2 minus 1 sine inverse of or this is minus root 3 minus 1 so this is 2 sin inverse of 1 minus root 3 Here, uh, here actually we have to tell the thing that is, uh, we know that the principal value branch of cos inverse x that belongs to 0 to pi. Uh, so it means cos inverse 2x also will be in the range 0 to pi only. But here cos inverse 2x is coming slightly more than pi. So therefore there will be no solution for x. So therefore there are no solutions so s is a s is an empty set the option d is the correct answer now here it is told let a a comma b so a to b be a subset of 0 to 2 pi be the largest interval for which sine inverse of sine theta minus cos inverse of sine theta um, greater than 0 theta belongs to 0 to 2 pi holds if alpha x square plus beta x plus sine inverse 6 x square minus 6x plus 10 plus cos inverse x square minus 6x plus 10 equal to 0 and alpha minus beta equal to b minus a then alpha is equal to so is equal to so sine inverse of sine theta sine inverse of sine theta plus this is cos inverse of sine theta is greater than Now sine inverse of x plus cos inverse of x that is equal to pi by 2. So cos inverse x that is pi by 2 minus sine inverse of x. 
So this we can write it as this sine inverse of sine theta minus uh, pi by two plus sine inverse of sine theta that is greater than zero. Sine inverse of sine theta. We can say two sine inverse of sine theta that is greater than pi by two. And sine inverse sine theta is greater than pi by four. So if we apply sine on both sides, so then I will get sine theta is greater than uh, sine pi by four, that is one by two. Is that sine theta is greater than sine pi by four? So the graph of sine function is like this. So it means it should be more than one by root two. So now we know that at pi by four and pi by four also, uh, it will come one by root two. So in the range pi will take in the range zero to two pi. So this is the range. So therefore, theta belongs to the interval pi by four. Pi by four to three pi by four. Now, which is same equal to the interval a to b. So, therefore, the value of a is pi by four. The value of b is three pi by four. So, now if you put now alpha minus beta, that is equal to b minus a. So, three pi by four minus pi by four. So, that is two pi by four, which is equal to pi by two. Is equal to pi by equal to pi by 2. So now therefore, this tool therefore alpha x square, alpha x square. So therefore from here we can say that alpha you have to find. So beta I can write it as alpha minus pi by 2. So therefore alpha x square plus beta x means alpha minus pi by 2 into x plus sine square so, sorry sine inverse of this x square minus 6x plus 10 that can be written as x square minus 6x 2 3 just 6 so plus 9 plus 1 so this is actually x minus 3 whole square plus 1 so this I can write it as sine inverse x minus 3 whole square plus 1. Then plus cos inverse of x minus 3 whole square plus 1. That is equal to 0. Okay, so then, so now, uh, so therefore now since we know that sine inverse x and cos inverse x or sine inverse y or cos inverse y are defined only if 
only if y is in the range minus 1 to plus 1. So therefore, this should be plus 1 only since y and x minus 3 whole square, x minus 3 whole square plus 1, that should be always more than or equal to 1. So therefore, this will be defined only if that this is equal to 1. So therefore, x minus 3 whole square plus 1, that should be equal to 1 only. So since x should be 3, the value of x should be 3. Now therefore, alpha x square plus alpha minus pi by 2x plus sine inverse of 1 plus cos inverse of 1 uh, that is equal to 0. So now uh, sine inverse 1 is equal to pi by 2 and cos inverse 1 is 0. So now alpha x is 3 so 3 square plus alpha minus pi by 2 and 2, 3 uh, plus pi by 2 that is equal to 0 so there 9 alpha plus 3 alpha minus 3 pi by 2 plus pi by 2 that is equal to 0 so therefore you can say 12 alpha that is equal to uh, 3 pi by 2 minus pi by 2 so that is 2 pi by 2 so that is pi so therefore alpha value is pi by 12 so pi by 12 is the required value of alpha. So option D is the correct answer. Here it is told if sine inverse alpha, sine inverse alpha by 17 plus cos inverse by 5 minus tan inverse of 77 by 36 equal to 0, where alpha is in the range, alpha is from 0 to 13. And sine inverse of sine alpha plus cos inverse of cos alpha is equal to how much? Sin inverse sin alpha plus cos inverse of cos alpha is how much? Okay. So now, um, so now let us take cos inverse of four by five as some. Let's say P and tan inverse of 77 by 36 as U. So now, therefore, we can write it as sine inverse of alpha by 17. That is equal to minus cos inverse of 4 by 5 plus tan inverse of 77 by 36. Therefore, I can say sine inverse of alpha by 17. That is equal to P minus Q. Or this is Q minus P. So yeah, alpha by 17 that is nothing but sine of sine of Q minus P. Sine Q minus P. So therefore, which is so sine Q minus P that is equal to sine Q sine Q cos P minus cos Q sine P. So now um Now uh, here cos p from here I can tell cos p that is 4 by 5 and from here tan q that is 7 by 36. So therefore now uh, sine p sine p that will be equal to root over 1 minus 16 by 25. So that is root over 9 by 25. So that is 3 by 5. Similarly tan q is this. So sine q sine q that is 77 by now tan q it means see if this is q this is 77 this is 36 then this length this length will be square root of 77 square plus 36 square 
so this will be equal to square root of 6 36 square that is equal to 85 so sine q will be 77 by 85 and cos q that will be equal to 36 by 85 so therefore this value this value will be sin q that is 77 by 85 cos p that is 4 by 5 minus cos q that is 36 by 85 into sin p into sin p that is 3 by 5 so this will be equal to sin q minus p this will be equal to eighty five into five. So will be seven four seven twenty eight. Uh, then four seven twenty eight thirty minus this is three six eighteen three six nine one hundred eight. So this is two hundred by eighty five into five. 5 4 are 20, so 5 8 are 45, 1 are 5, 5 7 are 35. So this is 8 by 17. Therefore, alpha by 17 is equal to 8 by 17. Alpha by 17 is 8 by 17. So therefore, alpha will be equal to 8. Okay, so alpha is 8. So therefore, now you have to find sine inverse of sine 8 minus plus cos inverse of cos 8. Now, 8, the value 8 is more than 2 pi but less than 3 pi. Since 2 pi is approximately 6.28 and 3 pi is approximately uh, 9.42 so now um, therefore now we have to we have to do odd multiple of pi minus 8 so that is 3 pi minus 8 and we have to 8 minus pi now for sine inverse sine inverse function the the principal value branch is from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 uh, so now that means it is from minus 1.57 to 1.57 and for cos inverse function the range is from 0 to 3.14 since from 0 to pi now this value is coming 9.42 minus 8 so that is 1.42 and this value is coming 8 minus 6.28 so this will be uh, 2 three seven so this is one point seven two one point seven two so now uh, this one is coming within the principal value branch for sine inverse function also for sine inverse this will be three pi minus eight only three pi minus eight and plus for cos inverse this will be uh, this So, for cos inverse, 8 minus 2 pi we have to take. Minus 2 pi, so this will be 3 pi minus 8 plus 8 minus 2 pi. So, 8, 8 will cancel. So the answer is pi. So pi is the correct answer. Then here it is told that 
is tan inverse of 1 minus 1 plus root 3 by 3 plus root 3. I can write it as root 3 into uh, root 3 plus 1. And uh, okay, then plus sec inverse. This I can write it as over 8 plus 4 root 3. So it is like 2 I can take common and then I can write 4 plus 2 root 3 divided by 2 into 3 plus okay. Uh, You can multiply parameter and denominator by 2 actually here. So this will be 16 plus 8 root 3 divided by plus 6 root 3. Now here, these two will cancel out root 3 plus 1 and root 3 plus 1. So it is 10 inverse of 1 by root 3 plus this is sec inverse of this. I can write it as uh, root over this is. Uh, for the eight there four I can take as common and I can write four plus two root three divided by this is this I can write uh, two three or six so 3 square plus root 3 square 5 plus 3 is 12 plus 2 into 3 into root 3 and this one can be written as this is tan inverse of 1 by root 3 which is pi by 3 obviously okay, no, or tan, it is pi by 6 since tan 30 is 1 by root 3 and plus this is sec inverse of the second rate 4 into this will be this is root 3 square plus 1 square plus 2 root 3 divided by this will be 3 plus root 3 root square so tan inverse 1 by root 3 is pi by 6 plus sec inverse of this so this is sec inverse of uh, root over 4 into root 3 plus 1 whole square divided by this will be root 3 square, so 3 coming outside. So this is root 3 plus 1 whole square. So now this will get cancelled. And then I can write pi by 6 plus sec inverse of pi root 3. Now root 3 by or sec inverse 2 by root 3, same as cos inverse of root 3 by 2. So cos inverse root 3 by 2, it is pi by 6. So it is pi by 6 plus pi by 6. So this is part 2 pi by 6, that is pi by 3. So pi by 3 is the answer. Option B is the correct answer. Here, here it is told that the sum of the absolute maximum and absolute minimum uh, values of the function f of x equal to 10 inverse of sin x minus cos x in the interval 0 to pi is tan inverse of sin x minus cos x absolute minimum and absolute maximum values of this function that we have to find 
Now sin x minus cos x that can be written as 2 into 1 by root 2 sin x. So this is root 2 into sin x minus pi by 4. sine of x minus pi by 4 that will go from that belongs to now root 2 sine x minus pi by 4 that belongs to uh, minus root 2 to plus root 2 therefore plus root 2 now we know that tan inverse function that is in the range minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and function is like this so at, uh, at minus pi by 2 it is minus infinity and at pi by 2 it is infinity at 0 it is 0 Here it is told in the interval 0 to pi. The thing is, x is going from x is going from 0 to pi. So therefore, x minus pi by 4 that will go from minus pi by 4 to 3 pi by 4. In this range, if I take the sine function, sine function it is like this, 3 pi by 4 is here, so at 3 pi by 4 it is 1 by, and minus pi by 4 also it is minus 1 by root 2. So therefore, x minus pi by 4 is going from here to here, from minus pi by 4 to plus 3 pi by 4. So it means that the minimum value will come here, but the maximum value will come at pi by 2. So therefore, uh, root 2 sine x minus pi by 4, that will belong to the interval uh, minus 1 by root 2 to 1. Minus 1 by root 2. In sine x minus pi by 4, that will go from minus 1 by root 2 to 1. So, therefore, now sine x minus pi by 4, that will go from this, is, uh, this will become minus root 2. This will be root 2. So, This will go from minus one to root minus one to root two. Now therefore the absolute minimum value of the function function f of x which is root two uh, this uh, now this is actually this function f of x. The function f of x I can write it as tan inverse of tan inverse of root two sine x minus pi by four. So it is obviously an tan inverse is an increasing function. So its minimum value is tan inverse of minus one and maximum value is tan inverse of root two tan inverse of So therefore, the function f of x that will 
belong to the interval uh, minus tan inverse 1 means tan inverse of minus 1 to tan inverse of 2. Minus tan inverse 1 means minus pi by 4. Since tan inverse 1 is pi by 4, so f of x belongs to the interval minus pi by 4 to tan inverse of root 2. So root 2. Now here uh, the sum of the absolute maximum and, and absolute minimum values of the functions. The, the sum of these two we have to find. So therefore the sum is uh, minus pi by 4 plus tan inverse of root 2. Minus by four plus ten so ten so minus by four. Now if I take if I take ten words of root two as theta, then uh, tan theta is root two, tan theta is and cos theta that will be equal to tan theta by uh, square root of 1 plus tan square theta that is 2 no it is 1 by sec theta 1 by root over 1 plus tan square theta so it is 1 by root over 1 plus 2 square so that is 1 by uh, root 3 so therefore theta can be written as tan uh, as cos inverse of 1 by root 3 also so therefore the sum of the given values that is Cos inverse of 1 by root 3 minus pi by 4. Cos inverse 1 by root 3 minus pi by 4. So option C is the correct answer. Then here it is told considering only the principal values of the inverse trigonometric functions, the domain of the function is considering only the principal values of the inverse trigonometric functions. The domain of the function f of x is cos inverse of x square minus 4x plus 2 divided by x square plus 3 is Considering only the principal values of the inverse trigonometric functions, the domain of the function is The principal values of the inverse trigonometric functions. The domain of this function. So now x square minus 4x plus 2 by x square plus 3. That should be in the range minus 1 to plus 1. Minus 1 to plus 1, and then so therefore x square minus 4x plus 2 by x square plus 3 that plus 1 that is that should be more than this is, uh, 0, which means that x square minus 4x plus 2 plus x square minus plus 3 by x square plus 3 that should be greater than 0. So this is 2x square uh, minus 4x plus 5 by x square plus 3 that is greater than or equal to 0 it means now this value should be always more than 3 so we can take it this side so it means this i can write uh, 
Is it 10? Actually, this x square minus 4x plus 2 that I can write plus plus 4 minus 2. So, this is x minus 2 whole square minus 2. Now this one, here I can say the discriminant that will be b square minus 4 ac. So this is 16 minus 4 fives are 20, 20 into 2, 40. So this is coming negative. So it means therefore 2x square minus 4x, 2x square minus 4x plus 5, that is always greater than 0 only. So therefore, this is always greater than zero. So x belongs to R. And here we have to find this x square minus 4x plus 2 by x square plus 3 minus 1 that is less than or equal to zero. <coughs> so this will be x square minus 4x plus 2 minus x square minus 3 divided by x square plus 3 that is less than or equal to so these two will get cancelled then we can say minus 4x minus 1 by x square plus 3 so x minus 1 by x square plus 3 that is less than or equal to 0 so it means minus of 4x plus 1 that should be less than or equal to 0 4x plus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0 so it means x should be more than or equal to minus 1 by 4 Minus 1 by 4. So therefore, x will belong to minus 1 by 4 to infinity. So we have to take its intersection with all numbers. Then we get the same thing that is minus 1 by 4 to infinity. So this is the required answer. So this is the required domain of this function. So option B is the correct answer. Then here it is told considering the principal values of the inverse trigonometric functions the sum of all the solutions of the equation of all the solutions of the equation this cos inverse x plus 2 sin inverse x plus uh, no minus 2 sin inverse x that is equal to cos inverse of 2x. <laughs> so now, cos inverse 2x, that is told that should be b from 0 to pi. So it means cos 0, cos pi is minus 1, so it will 2x should go from minus 1 to plus 1, so it means x should go from minus half to plus half. So we have to find out the answer in the range of x, that is minus half to plus half. In this range only, we have to find the answer. Now, uh, this can be written as sin inverse x, as you know, that is that can be written as pi by 2 minus cos inverse x. So therefore, this I can write cos inverse x minus 2 into pi by 2 minus cos inverse x, which is equal to cos inverse of 2x. So now this I can write cos inverse of x minus pi plus 2 cos inverse x, that is equal to cos inverse of 2x. Now that what uh, I can write 2 cos inverse x plus cos inverse x, that is 3 cos inverse x. That is equal to pi plus cos inverse of 2x. If you apply cos on both sides, then we will get cos of 3 cos inverse x. 
that is equal to cos of pi plus cos inverse of 2x. Now cos pi plus theta, cos pi plus theta that we can say that is equal to minus cos theta. Since in third quadrant cos is negative. So this will be now if I take this will come, this will come actually cos of three cos inverse x equal to cos of cos inverse of 2x. So this will be 2x, 2x is equal to cos of 3 cos inverse x. Therefore, we get uh, 2x equal to cos of 3 cos inverse x. Now, if I take cos inverse x as theta, then uh, cos theta that will be equal to x, cos theta that will be equal to x. Now, therefore, cos 3 theta that will be equal to uh, 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. So, therefore, cos of 3 theta that will be equal to 4x cube minus 3x. So now therefore 2x I can write this is 4x cube minus 3x. Now here actually uh, this will be minus of it's minus and come minus of 2x will come here minus 2x. So this is therefore 4x cube that will be equal to 3x minus 2x that is x. So therefore 4x cube minus x that is equal to 0 means x into 4x square minus 1 that is equal to 0. So it means x into 2x minus 1 into 2x plus 1 that is equal to 0. Therefore now x will be equal to 0 x can be equal to plus or minus half. Therefore, sum of all the solutions. Therefore, sum of all the solutions that will be minus half, plus half, plus zero, that is equal to zero only. So, zero option A is the correct answer. And here it is told the domain of this function we have to find domain of the function f of x equal to sine inverse of 2x square 2x square minus 3 plus log of, log of base 2 log of base half x square minus 5x plus 5 square minus 5x plus 5 where t is the greatest integer function is <coughs> okay this is the greatest integer function okay so now now this one I can write uh, minus of log. This we can also write f of x that is equal to sine inverse of x square minus 3. x minus 3. Plus this is log 2 of log 2. This minus 1 will be here. So this I can take it here. Log one by x square minus five x plus five. Log base two 
एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस फाइव एक्स प्लस फाइव पावर माइनस वन दिस शुड बी ग्रेटर देन जीरो मीन्स दैट एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस फाइव एक्स प्लस फाइव पावर माइनस वन दैट शुड बी ग्रेटर देन टू पावर जीरो दैट इज वन means x square minus 5x plus 5 that should be less than and more than 0 x square minus 5x plus 5 that should be greater than 0 it means so now here the discriminant the discriminant here this will be you know, d equal to b square minus 4ac so will be 25 minus 4 for the 20 fine so here to distinct real roots will come so now therefore x square minus 4x plus 5 x square minus 5x plus 5 that should be greater than means you know that if this is equal to 0 then what will come if this is equal to 0 then x will be equal to minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac 5 by 2 therefore i can say this is x minus 5 minus x minus 5 minus 5 by 2 into x minus 5 plus root 5 by 2 but this is greater than or equal to 0 it means now here if you take 5 plus root 5 by 2 and here if i take 5 minus 5 by 2 now if i take a value which is more than this 5 plus 5 root 5 this will be greater than 0 so positive negative and positive so therefore x should be either less than 5 minus root 5 by 2 or x should be more than 5 plus root 5 by 2 and should be less than 1 also now therefore x x square minus 5x plus 5 That should be less than one. It means that x square minus five x plus four that should be less than zero. It means x minus four and x minus one that should be less than zero. So it means x should belong to one, one to four. sign inverse this should be defined only if x square plus 3 uh, sorry minus 3 its greatest integer is from minus 1 to 1 so it means that 2x square minus 3 that should be from minus 1 to should be from minus 1 to minus 1 to 2 So therefore, two x square minus three that should be from minus one till. So therefore, then only it will come range minus one to one. So therefore, two x square that will be from two to five, and x square one to five by two. X will be from x square is from one to. Five by two. That means x should belong that minus root over five by two to one union one to one to root over five. By
Now we have to take the intersection of all these sets. So one, we draw the number line, and here we have five minus five by two. That is one. that is five minus put over uh, five is approximately two point two six. So two point two six by two. This is five plus two point two six by two. So this is uh, this one is approximately five minus. So this is three. Uh, no two point. Seven three point seven four by two, so it is approximately like one point two two to sixteen, uh, two seventy fourteen one point eight seven approx, and this is seven point two five by two. So this is approximately two three six two six uh, approximately three point six two five. This is four, one to four, and these values are not included also. One to four, and one point eight seven, which is five minus root five by two, still slightly less than that, slightly less than four, that is five plus root five by two, since it is three point three six to six. And then we have minus. I bet two, two, min, uh, two minus one minus two minus one. This value is this range we is not coming common. One two five by two one two five by two. So over 2.5 that is uh, root over 2.56 uh, if I do 2.2.6 that is approximately 1.6 2.5 is slightly less than 1.6 slightly less than 5 plus Five minus five root five. So this is root over five by two. Yeah, somewhere here. So this is also not coming common with this. So the only part Sorry, this is less than x is coming less than five minus root five by two, and x is either more than five plus root five by two. So this value is wrong. This range is not there, but this range is there. This range till minus infinity to five minus root five by two, and five plus root five by two till infinity. And here this part is coming common. So only one to four so there for this part. Okay. So only this part is coming common for all the three. It is one to root five by two. Two till infinity.
at minus 45, that is 2216 to 14. But here also should be less than zero. It's more than zero. It's less than one. If you can write this is B. x minus one x minus one that is less than zero. Now if I take some value, let's say three, then So in one to four. So this part only is coming common one to root four. So none of the options is coming. So none of the options is coming here. Then here, uh, if x goes from 0 to 1 by root 2, and sine inverse x by alpha, sine inverse x by alpha, that is equal to cos inverse x by, by beta, then the value of sine of 2 pi alpha by alpha plus beta is yeah, this is this was wrong so it is 2.74 so this value is actually ones are two two eights uh, two ones are two two threes are six two seven the fourteen so one point seven so this value is slightly less than five by two so root five by two will be somewhere here slightly more than five minus root five by two so it means this part only is the common so it means it is one two five minus root five by two five minus root five by two so here uh, Option C is the correct answer. This is wrong. Option C only is the correct answer. Okay, so now uh, the value of sine 2 pi alpha by alpha plus beta, that value we have to find out. X goes from 0 to 1 by root 2. X goes from 0 to 1 by root 2. Value of sine by alpha by alpha plus beta is x 
x goes from 0 to 1 by root 2. So let us take it as k, some constant. So therefore, sine inverse x plus cos inverse x that can be told as this is k alpha k into alpha plus beta, which is equal to pi by 2, obviously. So therefore, alpha plus beta value that is equal to pi by 2k. So now, therefore, 2 pi alpha by alpha plus beta that is equal to 2 pi alpha by pi by 2k. So pi pi will cancel. So this is 4k alpha. 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 So now alpha. So now k alpha that is sine inverse x. So this is equal to sine in four sine inverse x. And from here k beta that is equal to cos inverse x. So four sine inverse x. That value we have to find out. So let so sine inverse x equal to theta. So then x is going from 0 to 1 by root 2. So it means that sine inverse x that is going from 0 to pi by 4. Therefore, theta is going from z theta belongs to the range 0 to pi by 4. Now it means sine inverse x is theta. So x is sine theta. x is sine theta. So therefore, now cos theta equal to root over 1 minus x square. Since sine theta, we have told it as x. So now, therefore, now it means that uh, this sine of 2 pi alpha by alpha plus beta, that value we have to find. So it is sine of. Now this value we have found, found it as 4 sin alpha. So it is sin 4 sin inverse x. That value we have to find out. So it is sin theta. That value we have to find out. So therefore uh, sin 4 theta. That value that is equal to actually 2 sin 2 theta into cos 2 theta. So now uh, sin. Now cos 2 theta. Cos theta that is we have found. Now cos 2 theta that is uh, 1 minus 2 sin square theta. So that is equal to 1 minus 2 x square and sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta. So this actually we can write it as sine theta cos theta. Since why sine 2 theta is 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta into cos 2 theta. So therefore sine 4 theta value that is actually 4 into x into root over 1 minus x square into 1 minus 2 x square. So 4x root over 1 minus x square into 1. 4x into 1 root over 1 minus x square into 1 minus 2x square. So option B is the correct answer. Then here, it has been told that um, you have to find out the value of tan of this. So now, tan inverse of 1 by 5 plus tan inverse of 1 by 8 that can be written as now we know that tan of x plus tan tan inverse x plus tan inverse y that can be written as tan inverse of tan inverse of x plus y by 1 minus x y so this i can write it as tan inverse of tan inverse of x plus y so 1 by 5 plus 1 by 8 by 1 minus 1 by 5 into 1 by 8 so this is tan inverse of uh, 1 by 5 it's a 40 divided by 1 minus 1 by 40 that is 39 by 40. So this is this will be equal to tan inverse of 1 by 39. Tan inverse of 1 by 39. Now therefore <coughs> So 
sorry this sorry this is 1 by 5 plus 1 by 8 so this is 8 plus 5 so this is 13 by 40 13 by 39 so it is 1 by 3 so tan inverse of 1 by 3 this is and also tan inverse x that I, that I can write it as tan inverse of x by 1 minus x square since if I take x as tan theta then we'll get 2 tan theta by 1 minus tan square theta which is tan 2 theta so now therefore 2 tan inverse of this I can write this will be 2 tan inverse of 1 by 3 3 plus sec inverse of root 5 by 2 this when we find out now tan inverse 1 by 3 that I can write tan inverse of 2 by 3 by 1 minus 1 by 9 plus sec inverse root 5 by 2 means cos inverse of 2 by root 5 or I can write it as tan inverse of uh, so root 5 by 2 if I take it as a alpha so then tan alpha that will be equal to root over second square theta minus 1 root 5 by 2 whole square minus 1 so 5 by 4 minus 1 so one root over one by four. So this is one by two. So this sec inverse root five by two, I can write it as tan inverse of one by two. So now therefore this value tan inverse two tan inverse one by three plus tan inverse of half that value we find. So this will be tan inverse of this we got that is two by three by eight by nine plus tan inverse of half plus tan inverse of half. So this will be tan inverse of 2 by 3 into 9 by 8 into plus tan inverse of half. So now 2 4 is a 8 is 9, 3 3 is a 9. So tan inverse of 3 by 4 plus tan inverse of half. So, um, so this will be uh, tan inverse of 3 by 4 plus half by 1 minus 3 by 4 into 1 by 2. So this will be equal to tan inverse of uh, 4. The LCM is 4 and this is 3 plus 2 is 4 divided by this is 1 minus 3 by 8. So this is 5 by 8. So this is 10 inverse of 5 by 8. No, 5 by 4 and 8 by 5. So 5, 5 will cancel 4 to z. So this is 10 inverse of 2. 10 inverse of 2. So therefore now we have to find 10 of 10 inverse of 2. So this is 2. So 2 option B is the correct answer. 